Welcome back to another candid session of Drone Business Strategy Magazine, where we seamlessly blend straight up, street smart strategies with scholarly insights to empower and inspire your professional aerial ambitions. And now, here's our navigator, business strategist, and commercial drone pilot, Tony Marino. With black coffee and cigar in hand on the West Coast, welcome everybody to the Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. I'm Marino, and today, I'm going to be answering your top 10 questions. These are questions you sent me over the last year related to starting a drone service business or fortifying your current operation. It's aimed at helping you as a drone operator take your aerial ventures to new and greater heights. I'm entitled today's program, Drone Pilot Business Q&A. Very clever. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, I've missed something, you need to correct me, do so. Please leave it in the comments below. What are, this is question one, what are the key legal and regulatory requirements for starting a drone service business and, and how do they vary by location? All right. The drone industry, heavily regulated and becoming more so daily, it feels as though, and the rules can vary by country by state, even by city. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, to get started, operators need to research the specific regulations in their area and consider factors such as licensing, flight restrictions, and privacy laws. What about the FAA? You may already have your Part 107. Maybe you don't know anything about the Part 107. There's links below to take you to the locations on the FAA's platform so that you can learn more about that, okay? But you need to know all the rules and regulations. And if you're flying commercially, even if you think you're just going to go out and fiddle fart around and throw up a video on YouTube, you're technically monetizing in a sense, right? That's commercial work. And they can take you down or you can get in trouble for flying commercially when you're not certified. You don't want this, all right? So you got to take a look at the legal and regulatory conditions. So we got to get the part 107. We got to study for that, right? Take the test. And then every couple of years, you're going to go back and do a refresher. You got to register your drone, right? At the FAA drone zone. That's every three years for each drone. And if you're flying commercially, it really doesn't matter how big or small the drone is right? You're going to still need to get the certification because you're flying commercially. Even if you've got a teeny dinky drone that you can fit in your pocket, you fly it commercially, you need a part 107, all right? What about flight restrictions? A lot of those things you're going to learn, you can look at charts and go, well, look at this. I can see that there's a TFR over here. I can see I shouldn't fly over there because there's a military thing going on. And then you're looking at the NOTAMs, right? You're taking a look at TFRs. You're looking at flight conditions in the area. What are the restrictions? Is there a jailhouse near the area you're flying? That could land your drone because you're flying in basically an area where your drone won't fly and it will land and then you will get in trouble. So what are those restrictions? What about local? What about the local parks? Now, sure, the FAA controls the, the airways, but where are you taking off and landing from? That matters too. You take off from the wrong location, private property, somewhere in the city that you shouldn't be lifting off from because it's posted or maybe it's not posted, but the city's got it in their own rules and regulations. You need to know these things, okay? The business you say may be your own. So that's, that's some of the key legal and regulatory requirements for starting a drone service business. And let's not forget about our business legal structure, are we going to be a sole proprietor? Are we going to be a partnership? Are we going to be a limited liability partner, an LLC, a limited liability company? What's your business legal structure? You're going to be a S corp. You're going to be a C corp. You have to file paperwork for that. So that's legal and regulatory, right? You got to pay taxes. 
So you're either going to be using your social security number in the U.S. or you're going to be using the tax ID number, the EIN that you're going to get from the IRS. There's not a big fee to that. In fact, there's no fee at all, but you still have to register. All right. Certainly, if you file for a corporation, an LLC, for example, is about 100 bucks a year just to be the LLC. But whether you become an LLC, whether you're going to do sole proprietorship, partnership, S-Corp, C-Corp, make sure you check with the legal beagles, right? Licensed attorneys. Make sure you're checking with an accountant, all right? This is your business. I'm sharing ideas, okay? You're the one that's got to take these ideas, and now you've got to flesh through them so they contour the way you want to do business relative to your aerial operation, okay? Question two, how can I determine the most profitable niches or services within the drone industry for my startup? Well, the profitability of drone services often depends on local demand, right? Supply and demand, but it's local demand. Operators should research market trends, speak with potential clients, and access competition to find profitable niches. Take a look at them. Look at what your competitors are doing. Conduct your due diligence. Services like aerial photography, surveying, or agricultural support are often in high demand. So you're looking at the news. You're looking at uh, industry trends, right? Usually that's through some, maybe it's a social media platform. You're following a, a particular group or a particular organization so that you can stay on, you can keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening out there. This is part of your business development. Got to research the market trends. Where are we going? Where are those opportunities? What should I stay away from? Where's the greatest risk? Where's my greatest opportunities? And those can change on a regular basis as the laws change. And then you've got creatives out there who are taking their drone and doing is it's very interesting work with them. Private investigators are now doing surveillance. So there's all kinds of different creative things that are now starting to blossom from this still very infant industry. Let's take a look at question three. What types of insurance coverage are essential for a drone service business and how do I go about obtaining them? Well, do you need insurance or not? Well, what do you have in the way of assets? What can they take from you if you land the drone in somebody's hair and they sue you, right? You land the drone in the wrong spot. You go through a, into a power area and you're in a power plant. The next thing you know, you've short-circuited out the whole city. Well, who do you think is going to pay, pay reparations for that? It's going to be you. If you don't have insurance, it's coming out of your pocket, all right? So that's a decision that you have to make whether or not you're going to carry insurance at all times. There are also insurance carriers out there that'll do one-offs. You only need to buy the, the binder for that particular flight on that particular day at that particular location. And many organizations are out there doing that. So you've got to prioritize as a drone operator the insurance to protect your business and your clients. Not just about protecting you. It's about protecting your clients. You may have insurance on your drone, right? Maybe you've got the... The, the extended care through DJI, okay, and you lose the drone, it's going to cost you 99 bucks. They send you a new one, great. But what about the liability side of it? The damage that you might have caused with the drone on purpose or accidentally, right? And coverage might include liability, equipment, uh, even cybersecurity insurance is not a bad thing to look into. And a lot of insurance carriers, State Farm, that's who I go through, I'm covered at all times. Right, but you can do the one-off. It's not expensive as far as I'm concerned. A few hundred a year, I mean, it's a bargain. It's peace of mind, but that's your decision. Working with a knowledgeable insurance, insurance agent that knows about the drone industry also helps as you're out there sifting through the many potential insurance agents that might, you know, you might want to do business with. So they got to understand our unique needs as drone operators, right? That's crucial. Question four, what are the primary cost considerations when launching a drone service business and how can I create a realistic budget? It's a great question. 
Setting up a drone service business involves various costs, just like any business, whether you're opening up on a ra- restaurant, right? You got equipment, you got to train the staff, you got insurance, there's marketing, right? Advertising, etc. To create a realistic budget, drone operators got to research each cost category, anticipate overhead, and plan for contingencies. So you've got to basically sit down and say to yourself, what's it going to cost me to start this thing? What's the drone going to cost? Am I going to work from home? What's my overhead going to look like? What about, you know, you got fixed and variable things that are moving. Your rent stays the same. Your other things that can fluctuate. Maybe you're flying more this month, so there's more of an insurance cost for you because you're flying more frequently and you're using the one-off insurance process rather than like I do with, with it being on at all times. So that can be variable. Your electricity, that can be variable each month, right? To operate your, your whether you're working from home or you have your own facility somewhere. So all these things are changing. There's, they're ebbing and flowing, but you've got to be able to anticipate these things ahead of time. And that's where the budget comes in. In fact, I've created a budget. If you come over to the website at Aerial Northwest, grab the, the, the I'll even have a link below so you can go right to the, to the, the article that I wrote about this. Very in-depth, very helpful about setting up that budget along with creating your business plan. Critical. Got to have a business plan. Whether you write it on a napkin or you've got something official with 600 pages, you got this is your that's your roadmap. That's your that's your that's your path to success. You got to know where you're going. Where's the destination? That's the business plan. That it's always changing, of course. Once you write the business plan, it's always moving because you're always making changes here and there because the market's changing constantly. What technology equipment? This is question five. What technology and equipment are essential for a successful drone operation and where can I source them? Well, choosing the right equipment, that's critical. It's crucial. But you need to find a drone that's going to be reliable. It's got a a great camera. It's going to do the job. Uh, If it's going to be FLIR infrared, you've got to make sure you've got the right equipment there, right? You got to have the right software for data processing. You know, trusted manufacturers and specialized retailers are great places to source the equipment. Online forums. It's essential to invest in quality gear for that competitive edge, but just enough to do it. Don't overdo. You don't need to go buy the you know the fifty five thousand dollar drone, right? When you're doing some wedding photography, you see what I mean. So. Get enough to get the equipment that makes sense. And then you grow slowly. You're slow and steady rather than fast and furious. You don't want to be fools rush in. You don't want that. That's the way you lose control of your business real quick. And then things go into the graveyard spiral. We don't like that. Question six. How can I effectively market my drone service business to attract clients and build a strong customer base? Without marketing, nothing sells. Period. End of story. Got to have you. Got to answer this question. Marketing is the key to business success. Period. And end of story. You could be the greatest artist in the world, but if you put it under your bed, nobody even knows it's there to purchase it. So the people have to become aware of what you do, right? And then you've got competition. What makes you better than the other guy or girl? Huh? Right? Is it better equipment? Have you been flying longer? You have no accidents. You have a better name recognition, brand recognition in the marketplace. Operators should leverage online platforms, especially when they're starting out more of a grassroots. You can throw a bunch of money at your marketing and advertising right out of the gate, or you can do it school of hard knocks, which is a lot slower. But you're also able to learn things as you're developing your business marketing strategy. All right. So you got to leverage online platforms. You got to online social media and partnerships with local businesses. That's huge. Get involved with local community. What about the uh, junior college, the city college in your area? Maybe you could go over and run some seminars over there. Huh? That's marketing, right? What about earned media? Maybe there's something going on in the market. You call your local newspaper and say, "Hey." I'm a commercial drone operator over here, and I got some uh, input on this uh, story that just happened here with the you know, over at this X Y Z. You can become the local expert. We call that earned media. That doesn't cost you any money. It's free publicity for you. Plus, it makes you look like an expert. 
And a lot of times when the media is bumping you, that gives you that added credibility, right? That's all part of marketing. You got to showcase your past projects. You got to have a portfolio online. How are you going to attract clients? How are they going to see your work? You got to have somewhere that they can come and take a look, right? See if it's a good fit for what they need. You're always marketing. Always be marketing. Okay, marketing is not a bad thing. Marketing is really basically taking your baby and introducing your little child to the world. Okay? That's what you're doing. Your goal is to help achieve goals, solve problems, and satisfy needs for your clients. Achieve goals, solve problems, and satisfy needs. That's what you do. That's what we all do. That's our job. All right? Do it well. Be consistent. And then as that name brand starts to pick up steam, then you have to invest less in your advertising because people already know you through word of mouth. Word of mouth is the best, right? Question seven, what are the best practices for pricing my drone services competitively while ensuring profitability? Let me tell you this. Last year, I wrote an article kind of an MBA thing, academia, but I applied it to our industry in real time. I have had more traffic to that one article page sent for free from Google, organic searching, I mean, every day. I mean, we're talking thousands of people are interested in this. Pricing can be challenging. And we as drone operators, we got to consider factors like operating costs, market demand, what are our competitors charging out there, what is the market's expectation, what's their perception of our worth. It's essential to strike a balance between competitiveness and profitability without whoring your products and services. There are those out there that will sell price over quality service. You may not like that, but their boneheads are out there doing it. Well, at the end of the day, we just have to stay with it. Don't whore your products. Put out quality. Sell the value, not the, not the price. Okay? Price is what you pay. That's what you pay for things is the price. The value is what you get. Remember that. I'll have a link below to the pricing strategy article. So you, and I've even got it. A machine on the web page where I wrote this article, I call it a machine, because you can go into the calculator and literally do your whole budget right there on the website for free. It's great. Is it the end all? Is it the holy grail? No. But is it helpful to you? I think so. So many think so. I think you'll like it too if you haven't already had your had a whack at it. I'll put a link below. Pricing strategy. Question eight. Are there any grants? subsidies or financing options available to support the startup of a drone service business. Some regions, and this is overlooked a lot in our industry, by the masses, by many pilots don't even know that this is even available, but some regions do offer grants or subsidies or, 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 or subsidies for uh, drone business, especially if they contribute to local economies. So, for example, you might get a grant to go out and conduct monthly seminars on drones at your local community college. You could get a grant to do that. So instead of the college paying you, the grant does. Okay. So there, there's all kinds of potential things and opportunities out there for us relative to um, subsidies and grants and other financing options creatively. Cre I call it creative financing. <laughs> Additionally, we as entrepreneurs, because that's what we are when we're in business, we can explore traditional financing options too, like small business loans. Maybe you need to step up your equipment, right? You've got to get a different camera. That's going to run you another twelve grand if you're if you're playing in the agriculture or in the or in the search and rescue world where these 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 sensors are so expensive. I mean, they're worth every penny, but that's what they cost. So you got to go get a loan for that maybe, right? I'm not even going to get into a financial performa and conducting a financial performa. Maybe in the future, 
that's where you really get into forecasting. You know, your investments in your business and and your and how you're you're you're, 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 you're utilizing your pricing strategy and and getting involved and in knowing your your futures. Where are you going to be in two or three years? And that's where your financial pro forma comes in. Okay, more on that in another episode. That's like a whole. I could probably do three episodes just on creating that financial pro forma. Business you save may be your own. This is you. This is your business. You can win or lose. It's up to you. The only a lot of times we get in our own way. Don't be that guy or that girl. Question nine. What strategies can I employ to stay updated on the latest industry trends and advancements in technology? Well, I think you know this one, but you got to keep your finger on the pulse. You have to continually be scanning the horizon. What's going on out there? Don't put your head in the sand. A lot of times you start making some money and what do we do? We get a little lazy, a little complacent. Don't that's when you wanna that's when you wanna hit it. When you strike when the iron's hot, that's when you go full steam ahead, and that's what gets you to that next level. That takes you from the hundred thousand dollar a year guy to the quarter of a million and beyond. Right? So stay ahead and stay updated on the critical news that's out there in our fast-paced drone industry. Uh, join industry associations. Uh, attend conferences. Uh, follow reputable drone news sources uh, to stay informed about the latest trends and technological advancements. You're, you're, you and I are cohorts, right? And I'm telling you, I'm teaching you some things that I know, and you'll leave some comments below with what you know, and we're helping each other. And it's also providing industry trends and talking about the, the state of our profession. All right. Number 10. Finally, this is our last question here. How can I develop a business plan that outlines my goals, strategies, and financial projections project, uh, projections for my drone service startup? This is all business planning. A well-structured business plan is critical. It's paramount. Operators should outline their business goals, strategies. You got to know your target audience. Who are there? Who are they? Who are you talking to when you're advertising? Who's the end user of the, who's getting the most value out of the products and services that you sell? And what about your financial projections? I've written a lot on target marketing and just a quick little note on that, just to kind of put a little highlight on it. You define your target audience. People will ask, well, how do I know my target? It's up to you. You choose your target audience. You choose their age group. You choose their, their gender. You choose their geolocation. Where do they live? They're all over the world or are they local in your town, right? You have to create that target market composite. Who are you communicating with? And all of your marketing funnels right directly like a laser beam toward that target audience. So you got to know what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what their needs are, what their goals are, what are their problems that you can help solve, right? Seeking guides from a business consultant, which is what I do. That's really where that's my sweet spot in business using my MBA. I'm a business strategist. That's what I do for fortune 1000 companies. That's what, I just happen to be a drone pilot, you know, for a number of years. And I love what I do and have been flying since I was, I don't know, the, the 80s. I love it. And if I can help a brother or sister get better at what they're doing and become more profitable, it makes me feel like the money I spent to go to school and to stumble and bump my head and to make mistakes and continually do so to this day. Because the more you do, the more you're going to whack yourself. But it just happens. You just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you start again if you have to. You got to reinvent sometimes. But you have to have a plan. You've got to know where's the destination. Where is there? Where is that? Because if you go in willy-nilly with your legs flying in the air like a maniac... You're not going to know really how to, where's your, where's your, where's it the best location to focus your marketing? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Is it LinkedIn? Is it, where is it? And how do you know that? So this is part of developing that strategy and understanding where does your market hang out? Where are they located? So you can go talk to them and show them your things and 
explain to them how you can sell, uh, how your product will create value to helping them achieve a goal, solve a problem, or satisfy a need relative to drone activities. So the business planning, critical. I've written articles on that. I'll have links below as well. Take your time. If you're not going to go to college, which you don't have to go to college, I just did that later in life. I had already been in my 40s before I even attended one day of university. I went nine years straight from the time I was 39 straight. So all those years before was the Navy, was doing my radio and TV in Los Angeles, was being a, you know, a comic, was, was no, there's no college. And then I got involved in buying and selling radio stations and doing little things to that. And then I became kind of a professional. And then ultimately I decided to go to college because I had Navy money. So I went back to school and it helped tremendously too when it came to motivating my kids because they were in high school at the time. So then I could say, look at pop, I'm graduating summa cum laude. You can at least get me a C, right? If daddy can run the businesses and go to college and maintain a 4.0, you guys can at least get me a C, low B, high C, give me some average stuff, right? So I was able to use it as leverage, but I had to be the example, which means I had to work much harder. So I kind of painted myself into a corner, but it worked out at the end of the day. The kids are wonderful. All right. Praise God for that. Now, those are the 10 questions. If there's more questions you have, let me know. I'm not a clairvoyant. I don't use Ouija boards or tarot cards or incantation. If something's bothering you, you've got to tell me what it is. All right. So leave the comments below. If I miss something, leave it below. Tell me what I missed. If there's something you want to add, throw it in. As we're all here as a team, we're helping each other. Sometimes drone pilots will think, oh, I, I don't want to give away my prices because my company, there's plenty of business out there, boys and girls. There's plenty of business for all of us. Share it. You don't need to put that one out of business or go over and, and snake that guy or trick that one or manipulate. Just do good. Get to know the public, treat people nice, be honest. If you can't do something, don't try it and get yourself in a pickle. Check your ego at the door, care about folks, and the money will cometh. Money's a derivative. Yes, it keeps us in business, and yes, it buys nice things. It keeps a lot of pressure off, but it doesn't stay long if you don't manage it correctly. That's why the business plan is critical. All right. And remember this too. Your business is always nimble and dynamic. It's ever changing. The one thing that's constant in our industry or in life in general is change. So don't be overly risk uh, change averse. It's okay to change and look for those changes and look for the opportunities to be able to benefit from those changes for your organization and for those individuals you serve out there. That wraps up our drone pilot business Q&A episode. Thanks a billion for hanging out with me today. I love you very much. I hope these answers I provided uh, I provide some valuable insight for you as a drone operator looking to start or even to fortify your, your current drone service business. And uh, I, just, I just wish you all green lights. That's it for the episode, Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get all the drone business strategy updates, episodes, and installments. If you're on the website at aerialnorthwest.com, sign up for the newsletter. It's absolutely free, the Drone Business Strategy magazine. It goes out every week. And don't forget, you can also download a copy of the white paper of today's episode right down in the show liner notes. So thanks for joining me today. Much love and fly exceptionally. See you soon. And that's a wrap for today's high-flying wisdom on the Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. Pre-planned for ambitious drone pilots like you. For more drone business strategy information and valuable resources, be sure to explore aerialnorthwest.com. Stay tuned for more aerial adventures and strategic brilliance exclusively on the Drone Business Strategy Magazine podcast. Until next time, keep those dreams flying high. Thank you.